what up everybody this is the pacific <laughs> revision i am one of your hosts miguel hello how are you thank you for tuning in alongside me is my co-host eric say hello eric you struggling today miguel <laughs> struggling today I know. Did, you have a, did you have a big week i did that had nothing to do with hockey though nothing. that is unfortunate considering uh this entire show <laughs> For the listeners and viewers, uh, I was at EDC. It's a big EDM music festival. I won't go into details, but that's where I was. I didn't watch much playoff hockey. I watched a few highlights. I kept up with the scores while I was there, but that's to the extent of it. How was your week, Eric? How? Hold on. How long is this festival? Three days. Three days. Where's it at? Where's it at? Obviously, at it's in the, Vegas. Obviously, in at Vegas. The, at the Las Vegas Motor Speedway. You guys have a motor speedway? Yes, we do. It's one. It's like one of the bigger ones. Like, I've could have could have fooled me. I guess. I guess you guys have a lot of space out there. I guess it, they do some big NASCAR event there every year. I've never been in NASCAR. I've heard it's fun, but yeah. I I need uh, I need someone to take me because it's not uh, it's not the most Latino for, like uh, thing you you think about. Like hockey, kind of like hockey. Yeah, I mean, you need someone to introduce you and take you into it before you go do it, and then the thing about NASCAR it. <sighs> It isn't great, and I'm sorry to all the fans. Have you been but in it, person? But in person, the thing is, what makes it fun is you're hanging out with your buddies, you're drinking some brews. It's the baseball effect, then. Yes, yes, 100%. That's what it is. God. I I, I do want to eventually go, because I do know, I have a friend who like makes like machine parts. I think they make pistons or something. Some sort of fancy mechanical thing, and they always invite me to, like, uh, back when they lived here, because I think they moved over to Ohio, they're like, come to Sonoma, I think is the, the racetrack that's by here. And it's like hella dope, because you get to basic, basically, he just hangs out in like the pit area, I guess, where they make all the changes and whatever. I mean, that sounds cool. That sounds fun. It does, but. But my thing is, you're sitting there, you're watching these cars go in circles after like 20 minutes, you're like, okay, yeah. I get it. I've I went to a, enough. I went to a baseball game last week. How was that? Mike Trout and Shohei Otani were around. The the uh, Connor McDavid and the Connor McDavid of, of baseball. <laughs> you you want to go watch the future Las Vegas days? I did, I did. Uh, morale, morale, Miguel. Let me tell you about uh, very low. If we want, to, if we want to transition into like teams and and morality, but uh, the morale's low. But the, it's always a party at the A's games, even if it's only like I think five thousand people were there, which isn't good because I think it holds like twenty k. Yeah, but, it's the lowest attended. MLB but, team. Yeah, so so maybe we'll eventually transition to a baseball show and you just talk about the Las Vegas Athletics when that happens in like two years. I cannot wait. But we have some playoff hockey to talk about. Playoffs? We have, a, we have a team that already advanced down to the Easter Conference Finals. I'm glad we waited. <laughs> Me too. Because, I mean, we could start there. Something... You never, I mean, short, long story short, don't win the President's Trophy. It is a curse. It's a bona fide <laughs> curse. And also, uh, also, don't have me say stupid stuff about a two-time Stanley Cup winning championship because that will ruin that's your the life. Bigger, that's the bigger thing. Uh, for those who don't know, Miguel, on after what, game one, uh, Toronto, 5 nothing win for the Toronto Maple Leafs, right? Miguel yes. goes ahead and writes, the Bolterra is over. Uh, Miguel, I don't think the Bolterra is over. I couldn't be more wrong. As they swept our President Trophy winners of this season, the Florida Panthers, who after putting Joe Thornton out there, still could <laughs> not do it. Look, if there's anyone who knows about viewing a team coming back from 3 nothing, it's Joe Thornton. Yeah, but he doesn't know how to do it. No, he doesn't. He just he just experienced it from the other side. <laughs> By the way, sad Joe Go Joe Thornton gift never gets told for me. I'm sorry, Joe. Like I know you. I know. Look, Joe Thornton. Let me. Can I address him directly? You think he watches Jumbo? Eric here, uh, half of the Pacific Division. Look, I understand a lot of people want you to win a cup. I understand it. I get it. You're like 44 years old right now. Great career, you know. Long time shark. I hate you so much. But it's kind of funny that you didn't get a cup. Let's be honest. Like, I know people want it, Joe. 
but it's kind of funny, at least for me. I know. You think he's retiring? You think he's done? He didn't play at all. This is the, this is the this oh, is the exactly. Know, but he, this is. He could probably ride a, a bench for one more season. I mean, I guess. Like, you don't really lose anything having him. Like, he's 700K probably again. Like, it's like below league minimum. Like, who cares? Like, sure. If he wants to ride out, like, go to Tampa. Why not? Or uh, Colorado, probably. I don't know. No, but like, no way Tampa's winning four in a row, even <laughs> if they happen to win three. Uh, be ready to clip this part out when, when we're here a year later. We're like, Tampa Bay won the cup again. But I don't know. They look, they look, I, I don't know. I, I, it's a shame because I picked Florida was my pre playoff pick. It was them and Colorado in the, uh, in the final for me was Florida winning the cup because I am an idiot. I am a goddamn idiot. And I, but I told you after like the first series, after, after round one, like, they looked bad against the Capitals, and they needed to be a lot better. And guess what? They weren't a lot better. Guess what doesn't happen a lot in the playoffs, Eric? Comeback victories. No. Although I, I will say, it does warm my heart as a Kings fan that as soon as the team uh, goes down 3-0, they go, you know who did it last? Your 2014 LA Kings. And I'm like, yeah, we did. Good that time. That's true. Yeah. But like... I mean, because in reality... How many times is that going to happen? Like, literally. Well, it's happened five times. In how many years? Oh, pff. hundreds. Exactly. And exactly. exactly. <laughs> A hundred and something years, I think, since the NHL has been around. Exactly. So, it doesn't happen often. And, I mean, I knew it was not going to happen with the with the Florida Panthers. Look, I, I said it before. Like, it, you just know. And I don't know how a better way to put it, but when the Kings were down 3 0 to the Sharks, you knew. I don't know why. Because because I remember that. So basically they got let's let's admit it. Florida got dominated by Tampa the entire series. Like that's plain and simple. I remember the Kings, I still remember every score from that goddamn seven game series. Game one, they lost it seven to two. Game two, they lost six three. And then game three, I'm oh, sorry, game two, they lost six three. Game three, they lost four three in overtime. So he had two blowouts by the Kings and then one close game where they almost had it, but a dumb puck went in and now you're down three, nothing. But for some reason I knew it's different. Like you just know when a team is dominating you badly and Tampa Bay dominated them the entire series. Three goals, Miguel, three goals past Andre Vasilevsky in four games. Let's be honest. Oof. It's Andre Vasilevsky. He was not going to have another series like he did in, in Toronto. And even well, then, he was pretty okay. <laughs> here's the thing. Against Toronto, he was above average, but he wasn't Vasilevsky in that series. He was still great. He was still good. This he is just the, wasn't Vasilevsky. This is the... This was Vasilevsky. Like, this, this is, is the is Connor McDavid here. argument where we're like, oh, he had 123 points. That's kind of a down here for Connor McDavid. <laughs> It's the same thing. It's Pretty the much. same thing. Never doubt Vasilevsky. Can I, can, I, can I give you some numbers? Yes. So since uh, 2020, the start of the 2020 playoffs, where they started uh, winning their first cup, Andre Vasilevsky has a goals allowed average of 0. 0.77 in clinching games. A Ow. 974 save percentage and six shutouts. In clinching games. <laughs> That's wild. That is wild. Also, let me remind you that since, uh, I believe since also 2020 playoffs, Tampa Bay has not lost two games in a row. That's impressive. That's, it's. And to be honest with you, I mean, is there anything else on this series? Like, Yes, I, w- I, I, I would. Well, yeah, lightly and good. But I, w- I would like to ask you because it, 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 it comes up a lot. Do you believe in moral victories in the playoffs? Because there's a lot of talk of like, well, it's your first year. You have to get your ass kicked before you start doing stuff. Does that matter to you as a no. fan? No, I don't think so. I don't give a shit. Then again, I am the privileged... <laughs> boy who got to see his team go all the way to the finals in the first year but no i don't believe in that you don't i don't think you need to watch your team get their teeth kicked in for fucking 
30 years before they do anything. They're just stupid. They, people say this because they had to go through it, but who cares? I, mean, I don't want to go through it. Like, you know what I mean? I don't know. That's just how I feel. I don't know. I feel like we, I feel like you do it if you're in the situation where, like, if you're in round two and your team lost in round one to that team, you kind of use it as like a measuring be like, well, we lost, but at least it wasn't that bad. Looking at you, Toronto. Like, if you're Toronto, because this argument keeps coming up. Do you blow it up? It's six years straight in the in the uh, in the first round. Do you need to do something drastic? And the answer is no, because this one is different. I know it doesn't mean anything. It's the first round. At the end of the day, it doesn't mean anything. But you're caught, you you went up against a dynasty. Like it sucks. It's, I'm sorry. Dude. But it's just bad luck on Toronto's end. I don't think they didn't blow it up. They shouldn't blow it up. No. Like, and I know you opinion, want it. I know you want it. In the last two seasons, it's just been bad luck. It's just bad luck. They ran into a goalie that was hot, and then this year they ran into, like you said, a dynasty. A dynasty in the making. <sighs> the Montreal one is still very inexcusable. Like, if that happened this year, or like, like I, I understand. Mean, they were up Price 3-1. Got hot, they were up 3-1 they lost, and they lost they to Boris. I know. Yeah. I understand. But at, at the end of the day, you're up 3-1. You're up 3-1 with a lot of pressure to do something, and you don't. But it's always interesting how much carrier over any of this has. Because I don't think I don't think any of the exits are gonna At least so far. I don't think anyone's gonna do anything drastic. Minnesota has to do drastic stuff because they have negative a thousand cap space. Because of the, the recapture penalties. I don't know. Like, it's it's always weird how this, these kind of narratives kind of drive, kind of create themselves. And if you're Florida, a ton of futures. I don't think they have their first round pick for the next three years. Like, they've wasted a lot in trying to get to where Tampa is. And I don't know. Like, it, it's it, I, I see a lot of comparison with Florida being thrown on with the first Tampa team that lost to Columbus in the first round and got swept after having the best yeah. regular season ever. I don't know. I, I think you're doing Florida Panthers an injustice comparing them to what's most likely going to be a dynasty if they complete the street beat. But at the end of the day, like, don't forget, Florida had to let go of their coach. Like, this isn't the coach they started off with. They started off with Joe Quenville, who got let go after all the Kyle Beach stuff came out, which he should have. It feels like every year a team gets embarrassed, does a terrible performance, and then the next year they, they do come better. back. Yeah, yeah, they do better. Uh, I mean, now, it's hard to tell who is it gonna who's gonna be. But now, how do you feel about the old uh, reports after Game Three that the Florida Panthers oh, were so out at a strip club at like three? Yeah, I forgot about this. I forgot this the stripper gate. Yes. Reports came out that yeah the, the Tampa Bay Florida <laughs> Tampa Bay Lightning players were out. No, Florida Panthers, club. Florida Panthers. Oh, Panthers. Yes. Oh. So you're down three zero and you're out at a strip club at three three a.m. As a fan, Miguel, what does that do to you? I'd be annoyed. I'm yeah. like, I'd be like, these guys are not taking it serious. They've already, their heart is no longer in it. They already believe they lost. Because if you're out partying after being down 3-0 in a series, that tells me you're all, your mindset's already on the offseason. You're already partying because you know the year, the season is over for you, which is very upsetting because as you would know, I would know as LA Kings, former LA Kings fan, it's never over until it's over. It really isn't. But then you kind of felt like it was over. Like after that Game 3 press conference, they were like, you could be up 3-0 dominated in the third period with 10 minutes left. And you just don't know what happens. A Pavelski can go down dead and bring true. back life to a team that it's true. should have lost. But So uh, it's not over until it's over. And it's it's a shame that if true that they went out and party strippers and didn't wait until out of the offseason. Yeah, it'll be interesting. Like, uh, it it sucks that Florida goes out like this because they have their first first round win in God knows how long. I think it was like ninety six, and you yeah. win the Presidents Trophy. You're the best team in the regular season, but you get swept by your closest geographical rival, your big brother, the Tampa Bay Lightning. 
in a very non-competitive series where you scored three goals in four games. Like, your season's still definitely a success. It's just a very extremely disappointing end to it. Yeah, so I'm saying, yeah, and it's for a team I used to that hadn't had any success in that long. This could just be a stepping stone to next year, the next two, three years. Because, I mean, they have a solid team, good goaltending. Spencer Knight's young, too. He's coming up. He seems like he's going to be good. So, but, I mean, there's a lot to be happy about. It does suck to get swept. Being, when you're the president's trophy, like, first off, anything other than a Stanley Cup, but even at least a Stanley Cup appearance, like, anything yeah. short of that is, is, to me, a failure of a season if you won a president's trophy. You should I guaranteed make the, the finals. And even if you don't win, you should at least made it. And that's some sort of like, okay, at least we made it this far. We were the best team in the East. We just couldn't cut it till to the end. So yeah. there's definitely a disappointment of a season for the Florida Panther fans. But there's still a lot to be happy about and then excited about because I'm sure Florida will come back just as good, just as strong next season. The problem is I feel like there's so many of these teams right now like. That literally, there's so such parity in the NHL because there's the the Toronto's Maple Leafs, like they're good. That's a good fucking team right over there. That has just been very unfortunate, very unlucky. But I feel like they finally got a good core team that can make a legitimate run to the cup, and hopefully, maybe that's next year. Then we got, I mean, this season, this year's not over, but then we have on the other side, we have the Colorado Avalanche who are making a run. But I'm saying they've they've had their share of disappointment the last few years where you're like these guys should be in the finals and they don't make it so and then you had Tampa the, like I said where they lost they got swept but then they came back to win it two years in a row maybe three we will see it's just like there's so many of these teams right now these good solid strong teams that you're like oh these these guys are just bound to win a cup so it's it's tough it is tough for florida like because there's so many of these teams more than i think ever like you've ever seen in the nhl and that, uh, so it'd that's be interesting. just that's the thing that you want we'll transition over colorado because you brought them up and it, it yeah. feeds perfectly into this but that's that's my thinking of my pre my pre-playoff picks is that i was like you just want you believe every year you're gonna have a new a new challenger come up and I was like, okay, you know what, Colorado, you've, you've suffered. And eventually a team just has to come out of fucking nowhere. I know Florida had the best fucking record in the, in the regular season. I know they won the President's Trophy. They just look great. So Florida. They were just Florida. But, like, and it's a cop-out. Picking the two best teams in a conference, I get it. But, like, the previous two years, we've had Montreal, who's the worst team in out of 16 in the playoffs. And you had the Dallas Stars, who are, like, God, I don't remember what rank they were in the bubble, but they were pretty low. Like the you Dallas always Stars? have these, yeah. You always have these teams. Oh, they, were, that are, they were they were similar to Montreal. Yeah. In a regular year, they would have not made the playoffs, which is really annoying. And it, you're fans. always waiting. You're always waiting for these new <laughs> challengers to come up, and it's always the teams you least expect. And you always have one or two that are expected, like the Tampa Bay Lightning, like like years previous, the, the Pittsburgh Penguins, the Kings, and the Blackhawks. Like for as much for as much parity there is. It does every five years. A new dominant team seems to be arising. Yeah, because I mean, like for years, we're like Washington is on the cusp of winning the cup, and then as soon as you're like, you know what? I just don't think this team has it. They're getting old. They're aging out. Boom! They yeah. fucking do it. Unfortunately, unfortunately to for me, but St. They Louis. Do it. Speaking of calling St. Louis, St. Louis on the cusp. And then they finally break through and the same thing, right? And that's what I'm saying. There's so many teams on the cusp right now. So it's tough because only one person wins it a year. And you still have Tampa who's dominating. Like Colorado, they've been on the cusp for the last three years. Freaking, uh, I mean, I want to say Florida because they weren't on the cusp, but now they are. Now you can say they're on the cusp because they got a, they built a great team. They're going to keep be able to keep that team together for now. And then, uh, and then even like again to make not to make it about myself, but Vegas too. That's another team on the cusp. Like no, you guys are you guys fell off the cusp hard and no. hit every stair on the way down. We can, we're gonna pull a Tampa where Tampa got dummied out four <laughs> zero, then they came back to win it the next two years. 
Vegas didn't make the playoffs. They got dummied out, no. and they're going to no. come I'm back sorry. to win. Sorry, it's not happening. I'm sorry. Pacific too good.